Alrighty, uh, so we begin today at the uh, other end of the White Rim Trail. Uh, this would be the Schaefer Trail. Now this is like my fifth or thereabouts uh, time driving Schaefer Trail, maybe even six. Um, not quite sure. Um, so I've driven it uh, both ways, you know, up and down. Um, in my opinion, um, you know, haven't been on some sketchy roads. Uh, this trail is actually quite easy. Uh, I should mention that this trail does not require a permit, and um, which gives a lot of people uh, a funny idea that they could do it. Which is the reason why you quite often see uh, family sedans, minivans, uh, you know, wannabe SUVs, uh, all sorts of vehicles will two-wheel drive, uh, drive down this road, you know, to grab some pictures. Now, uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, as you see, we're on well-paved road at this particular moment. Uh, well, well-compacted road, let's put it this way. Uh, off to the left of me, there's about uh 2000 foot drop uh the road is fairly wide and uh obviously uh your regular human being um who's never driven anything even remotely so close is going to uh panic uh, there's a lot of people that say oh my god i you know because i i did meet quite a few people over the last several weeks you know that have tried to drive this and got scared and uh turned away there's nothing wrong with that you know if you don't feel comfortable driving something you obviously shouldn't be driving it. Uh, but as you see straight up ahead you know it's nothing but <laughs> but a sheer cliff uh, often the uh, distance over there we just passed billowing smoke um, unfortunately uh, somebody uh, didn't adhere to the uh, fire uh, safety rules uh, which resulted in at least as of now uh, 5,500 acre uh, fire that's been um, burning uh, be somewhere behind Moab uh, it's been shrouding just about everything in smoke in whichever way the wind blows um, it's either really smoky even in here or the wind blows it the other way uh, past La Salle quite unfortunate uh, and the smoke keeps spread uh, not just the smoke but the actual fire keeps spreading uh, on day one it was 250 acres uh, after a couple of days uh, it was well in excess of 5,000 I wouldn't be surprised if it keeps spreading because uh, yesterday at the campsite um, I saw fire right now I'm about Uh, if I had to guess, probably like 50 miles away from the fire and I could still see it in the night. So uh, here you could see a decently equipped vehicle or two. Um, that, that's the kind of thing that you should be driving here. Something with high clearance 4x4. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because just like it is with uh, anything to do with off-roading, uh, it's not about what you see, it's what you don't see. Uh, because once you get past this initial ledge with its magnificent 2,000 foot drop, uh, you go from basically zero grade to about, I don't know if I had to guess, 15 to 20 percent uh, slope with sandy spots, with uh, switchbacks and tight turns and rocks and all sorts of stuff like that and I'm showing you this live so that you know uh, uh, Shaper Trail is like one of the three most famous uh, switchbacks here in Utah there's a whole bunch of uh, other switchback roads like for example uh, in Hello Joe Canyon there's the Spring uh, Spring Canyon switchbacks so uh, but this is perhaps some of the more traveled i'm guessing it's because it's in a national park that it counts uh and i you know haven't been to the three main ones out of the four i would say this one is 
it is pretty darn spectacular uh, now I should mention that because of the uh, smoke uh, the views are kind of like me um, and so I'm extremely privileged to uh, have been on this trail when uh, there was no smoke you know before the uh, before the fire so another significant thing to consider if you're coming out this way uh, is the time of day okay and I'm talking about both the morning and the evening because uh, territorially how Moab sits uh, versus how the Sun uh, rises and sets um, you could find yourself in somewhat of a, a pickle so what I'm what I mean by that is that right now right we're driving away from the Sun but I'm about to turn and put on my sunglasses by the way I carry your sunglasses always with you because you are going to get a lot of mileage out of them so what's gonna happen is entirety of the or almost entirety of the Schaefer Trail I'm gonna be staring at the Sun so if you're coming out to actually admire and explore Schaefer Trail uh, do keep in mind the time of day I would advise somewhere uh, like if you're going down I advise you to go there uh, after the Sun uh, crests in the sky okay if you're going up I advise you to go in the morning um, that that's just my personal suggestion because the Sun if you're coming up the trail the Sun is going to be uh, straight up in your eyes entire time mercifully there's a couple of uh, shaded spots uh, as you see but the rest of it and I mean like that's evident even in the color of the rocks uh, everything seems so white like has this light white uh, washed out hue um, so another thing to consider as you're going down or up Schaefer trail is that you're gonna have to share the road so what I mean by that is there's people here on mountain bikes going up or down there's also uh, people you know obviously in other vehicles going up or down so you have to be very comfortable sharing the road uh, you have to know the rules of the road you know if the person is coming up or if the person is coming down you have to find yourself a place to stop and let them pass uh, you may even um, have to back up in certain places like I have a very long wheelbase on my Tacoma as you see I'm not able to make this turn for two reasons number one is the wheelbase but number two I have uh, my tires rub when I turn extreme left or right so uh. but yes the, this is the Schaefer trail in a nutshell uh, there's a sheer drop entire way and you have to be fairly 